What's up, everybody? We are back. John Della Rose here, the leading Hispanic voice in science fiction. This is one of those videos that uh, won't get clicks, and I'm very sad about that because uh, I want to review more independent comics uh, because I love indies and I want to promote indies. And it would be nice uh, if people just would check stuff out for the sake of checking stuff out. But that's not how the comic reader base typically works. People only tune in for the things that they already like. And uh, they only turn in really tune in for Marvel and DC stuff, as we as we've seen uh, in a lot of these reviews. But this is Lola XOXO. And this is a Aspen book by a gal named Sia Ohm. I, and I, I know I'm going to pronounce this wrong, and I'm absolutely sorry about that. Uh, and she is a comic artist uh, who's been working for them for a long time. And this is sort of her her own uh, world and her own storyline. Uh, which she's done through them. I particularly love uh, her artwork, and so this is why I started reading this series. Um, if you uh, look at this, it's just like, it's really neat. Uh, horses are very hard things to draw for comic artists, so you can tell if somebody draws a good horse, they're probably a good comic artist. And she does this really neat style where it's like, it's almost looks like pencil work or colored pencils or something like that. I don't know how to really define it. But it, uh, if you go, if you look at uh, her art, which will show, uh, there's a bunch of, uh, you can kind of see that it, it looks like it, like the colors were done almost on top of these pencils without without inks, I guess. And she uses kind of the pencils as shading, which is pretty neat, um, and you don't see a lot. Now, uh, some of the darker lines here look like there are inks, but it, some of the pencil lines are just kept in uh, as as detail, and I really love that style. It's just really cool looking. Um, I met her at 2012 uh, San Diego Comic-Con, got a sketch done by her and just was like super impressed uh, watching her sketch at the table there. Super nice lady. And uh, I, I, of course, uh, wanted to support her since then. And uh, what reminded me of Lola XO, because I, I read this a long time ago, uh, was the fact that Michael Turner has a omnibus out uh, of his early work uh, with through Aspen and it's on Kickstarter think that might be ended by the time this video goes up, but uh, but she actually has a cover uh, done for that, an exclusive Kickstarter cover, and so I got that cover uh, because I love her art so much. And as you can see, she draws absolutely stunningly beautiful women, uh, and, and of course, uh, you know, if, if you're into the guys, uh, the pretty good looking guys too, just have very good figures, very nice backgrounds all the way around. And uh, this storyline overall, it's a pretty long book. Uh, so this is volume one, and there is a volume two, and then there's a third volume, which is not labeled volume three. And uh, vo this volume one and that volume three are available on Comixology Unlimited, which also makes it nice for people who just want to check things out. Um, and you can read through this. I mean, the art is just stunning all the way around. Look at this scene. Oh, my gosh. Um, and uh, I won't go through the whole book because I think it's uh, it's better if people pick it up and read it. But uh, it's about this girl, Lola, and it's a post-apocalyptic sort of uh, era where people wear goggles. It's kind of diesel punky uh, and uh, very Mad Max sort of era where, where things got all blown up by terrorists everywhere. People are bartering for food. Traders go across the country and you need protection because everybody's so brutal. They have a uh, carnival games where like they literally feed people the lions, just like old Roman times and things like that. And uh, there's this whole class system where there's like merchants who are like very wealthy. And uh, Lola goes to end up working for one in this for a little bit. He controls people uh, and, you know, shakes people down and, you know, of course, has enemies and, you know, people end up getting killed. And it's it's a uh, it's a pretty brutal uh, post apocalyptic system. I, I would say that's balanced by her artwork being so pretty again, because uh, she ends up uh, her artwork's just not dark in style. So it it, uh, it, it tends to balance the dark storyline quite a little bit. But it is very brutal. Uh, Lola uh, makes some friends along the way. And of course, some characters die along the way. And she has a, a, a character who's been looking out for her as like sort of a replacement father figure. And that's the main storyline is she wants to find her family. She believes they're alive somewhere, has and isn't sure what happened to them. She got separated from her parents as a child and is hoping they're alive. And, and her hope there's alive is what is what drives her as a character. So um, just, oh my gosh, the art is just so stunning all the way around. Every, every, every panel just makes me very happy to look at. And that is uh, that is uh, a big reason to read this 
uh, all the way around. Now, I would say the world buildings, you know, like I said, it's a uh, post-apocalyptic thing. The storyline, because she goes to work for this guy and you don't really understand what's going on on that level, at least in this first volume, is a little light. Uh, it's a little uh, decompressed, I would say, overall. Um, and you are, you, she doesn't find her parents and get any resolution in that that's kept for like an ongoing plot or whatnot. And, uh, because of the decompressions, I'd say that, I'd say the story suffers a little bit, uh, but, uh, it's still fun all the way around. It ends up, she's with this evil merchant guy and, and ends up, uh, you know, uh, with this other plot line that's converging with these quote carnies who are rebelling and, and they start to just torch everything. And uh, she eventually gets hightails it out of there with her with her remaining friends and gets back on her quest to find her parents. Sort of e an easy come, easy go. It feels like a Western, you know, because a lot of those Westerns have that easy come, easy go sort of vibe to it um, overall. Um, so enjoyable stuff. Uh, I recommend it. Uh, again, her art is, is some of my favorite. And um, if you enjoy post-apocalyptic stuff, you will probably enjoy this. If you like that old Western style, you'll enjoy it. And of course, uh, you know, this is a pretty modern uh, style of storytelling uh, in, in terms of the decompression, which I think lends to a little bit of slow pacing at points, but in, the art makes up for it. So I call this, uh, you know, probably seven and a half out of 10 overall. Uh, just, uh, you know, the, the art's a 10. Uh, the story story could have probably used a little bit more of a push, but the world building is excellent. Uh, and I like the characters. So uh, good stuff. And I hope you check it out. Let me know if you've read this. Uh, and of course, check out Indie Comics and support them. I'll see you soon.